Hello, my name is Marlis Nitschke and I'm happy to present you our work entitled as Sweetie Full Body Optimal Control Simulations with Change of Direction Directly Driven by Motion Capture Data. In many sport disciplines, we not only run straight but also change the direction. Especially the motions with change of direction are responsible for many injuries of, for example, the anterior cruciate ligament. Hence, motions with change of direction should get special attention in biomechanics and sports science. To analyze the underlying mechanisms, the motion is commonly recorded with optical motion capture systems. However, for analysis we have to estimate the underlying motion and internal variables like joint moments from the recordings. The reconstruction of the recorded motion from marker positions in ground reaction forces, short GIFs, can be performed using inverse methods. The basis is a human model which is scaled to match the participant. First, in inverse kinematics the re coordinates defining the model's pose, meaning translations and angles are estimated by minimizing the difference between measured and virtual markers attached to the model. Next, joint moments can be obtained with inverse dynamics. Inverse methods are easy to set up and fast to compute. However, inverse kinematics estimates the pose individually for every time step without taking time dependency into account. Furthermore, the two-step process leads to inconsistencies between kinematics and kinetics, which can especially be an issue when reconstructing fast motions. An alternative is reconstructive optimal control simulation. Reconstructive simulations are usually created by tracking coordinates and ground reaction forces. The simulation has the advantage that the entire motion is taken into account and leads to consistent estimates of various biomechanical variables. But inverse kinematics has to be performed first to estimate the coordinates for tracking. This might lead to error propagation. And so far the motion pass is predefined using a constraint. However, the pass is not always well defined, especially for motions with change of direction. Instead of tracking coordinates in the simulation, the marker positions could directly be tracked. This is numerically much more challenging. Marker tracking was so far only performed for torque driven or small musculoskeletal models. Furthermore, no motion with change of direction was reconstructed. This leads us to the following research question. Is it feasible to reconstruct motions with change of direction directly from motion capture data using optimal control simulations of a 3D full body musculoskeletal model? Therefore, we compared inverse methods versus coordinate tracking simulation versus marker tracking simulation. We recorded data of 10 participants with 42 reflective markers to measure full body motions. This measuring setup consisted of 11 cameras and two force blades. We used three trials each of straight and curved running and a V-cut. The basis of the reconstruction was a 3D full body musculoskeletal model called RunMed, which is short for running model for motions in all directions. The model has 33 degrees of freedom and 92 muscle tendon units to actuate the lower body. The arms are actuated using torque generators. Furthermore, the model has a penetration-based ground contact model with 16 contact points on the feet. The model was scaled in OpenSim using a measurement of neutral standing to match the participants. To generate the coordinate and the marker tracking simulation, we solved an optimal control problem. In detail, we searched for the states X and controls U of the model by minimizing the squared difference between measured and simulated variables over the entire duration t for all track variables n. Additionally, muscular effort and torque were minimized and a small regularization term was added to guide the solver. The optimization problem was defined subject to the dynamics of the model and bounds. The problem was solved using direct collocation and the solver EP opt. For the coordinate tracking simulation, we used the coordinates obtained from inverse kinematics and the measured ground reaction forces as input. For the marker tracking simulation, the marker positions were directly used as input besides the ground reaction forces. Let's first compare visually the result of inverse kinematics shown in red to the results of the marker tracking simulation shown in green. The measured marker positions are displayed in blue. 
When we have a detailed look and even zoom in, we can see differences between both methods at the toes. Inverse kinematics track the marker positions which were distorted due to the deformations at the shoes leading to unrealistic plantar flexions. In the simulation, passive movements prevent this behavior. Overall, there was a good agreement between the two methods resulting in similar marker deviations. Furthermore, we computed the root mean squared deviation between the estimated and reference variables. The results were aggregated by calculating the mean and standard deviation of the root mean squared deviation over the variables of a type and the 30 trials per motion. Hence, we computed, for example, the mean of all markers for 30 trials of straight running. The highlighted variables were used as input. For markers and ground reaction forces, the measured data was used as reference. The inverse methods had the smallest mean root mean square deviation for the markers. Therefore, inverse methods track the marker data closest. However, inverse kinematics might be prone to track measurement noise and soft tissue artifacts since it is performed individually on every time step. The simulation, in contrast, can act as a physical filter, avoiding the tracking of artifacts. For translations, angles and joint moments, the results from the inverse methods were used as reference. The root mean squared deviation was smaller for a specific variable when it was tracked. Hence, the root mean squared deviation of the markers was smaller for marker tracking compared to the coordinate tracking. This indicates that the marker tracking might be more accurate than the coordinate tracking. At the same time, the root mean squared deviation of the translations and angles was smaller when it was tracked in the simulation. However, there is no ground use for coordinates and moments since they cannot be measured directly with optical motion capture. The accuracy could be further evaluated by tracking simulated data, which would, however, not reflect all characteristics of real-life data. Alternatively, measurements with bone pins or medical imaging could be used as ground tools. Furthermore, a moving horizontal approach could be investigated to reconstruct longer motions. In conclusion, we successfully created reconstructive optimal control simulations from motions with change of direction by tracking marker data using a 3D full body musculoskeletal model. This allows the estimation of mutual and dynamically consistent kinematics and kinetics, including muscle dynamics. And marker tracking considerably improved marker accuracy compared to coordinate tracking. This work was supported by the Ada Lovelace Center and the Collaborative Research Center, AMKINS. Thank you.